What's up, guys? So, we're getting into the summer, and I do some work out in the garage, and I have that little room over there that has a little high wall in it. It's connected to the heat pump for the water heater. So it's kind of like controlled by the water heater, not by the room. There's just so much. I did add all this nice insulation last year, and boy, that made a difference. So it's like I'm out here, four o'clock, 4.30 right now or whatever, and it's not, it's not scalding hot. It's just warm. So, and I actually have this unit hooked up working. The cardboard's just directing the cold air into this area. So when I'm working on my electronics, sitting down here, it blows in here. There's that other high wall right there. So, I had like a couple of these high walls. I actually had three of them from a takeoff. And I think one or more was messed up. I don't remember, but... Remember originally I took one of these and hacked into it and made my own controls to intercept the, the speed signal to this fan and the feedback back. And I had it interface with that Frederick unit and it worked. <laughs> that was a 230 volt Frederick unit. And then I disconnected it, got rid of it. And because um, I was using it on the step up uh, transformer from my off grid inverter here, this 120 volt. So I think I just got rid of it and it was too too deep over there on the side of my house i got rid of it and then i haven't had that's been what almost two years or something now so maybe longer so fast forward to now is like i'm like you know what i think i have another high wall i think i want to put it up here and the condenser i have running this actually has another port on it to add another one so i went out to my you know shed out there i had this cardboard box with this unit sitting in there and it Turns out this is the one I hacked and put the Frederick thermostat right here and had, like I said, hacked all the interfaces. I was just using this for the coil and the fan and I had different thermistors on here going to the Fredericks and it worked. The sad thing is I had a third one of these and it was not in the cardboard box but sitting on top and it was one that I stole the motor out because I fried the motor on accident on the first Frederick one. So I swapped the motor with this one. Well, that unit out there, I saw that and I'm just cleaning up and I threw it away, like just like almost two weeks ago, whenever I went to the dump, the landfill. So now I get this one out and I realize this is the one that I mended all this back together and had a hole drilled through the front. I wanna make it work. And so I couldn't remember if I, how I left this. I wanna make sure it all turns on and works before I hook it up and install it. So this is where this little inverter checker comes in hand. So this is here, it's wired up to the L1, L2, and the S. O S is only going to this, and that's how you want it. So if you're using this in the field, you have your L1, your L2, and your S connected between the outdoor and the indoor, and it's powering the indoor, and then the S is communication between the two. So if you want to simulate the outdoor unit just to make this run, you unplug the S wire off of the outdoor unit, leave it loose. You hook this unit up to these three legs here. It's going to get power from L1 and L2, and then S is just going to this, and then you can kind of go in here. And you could kind of set modes. You could uh, like simulate target frequencies and stuff. This is really if you're probably simulating the indoor unit, really. But you could run the outdoor unit with this, which I haven't done yet, like on a test unit, not on my own unit. So, and you could program in the condenser temps, outdoor temps, all this kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. But I just have it on here just to make this thing be happy. Because um, maybe this, this will probably fault out after a while for lack of communication. So I just want to make sure the fan works really and that everything else is working. And it seems to be, other than this ugly cover here, I wish I would have kept the other one. So I might switch this one with the one that's in that room since nobody sees it. And I think I'm going to put this one right here just so it blows out this way when I'm working. I can aim the uh, little damper down towards me when I'm just on this thing a lot. And be comfortable for the summer is the idea. And since I have another port on that, I thought, why not? So... So I wanted to show you guys just a quick video of how this thing works. So I just pushed a button to test the communication to the indoor unit and it actually says communication normal, press OK for information. And this is a little tedious. Uh, I just already did that, so it's not going to see the outdoor, but oh, look at that. There's what I want. So indoor mode is on cool, target frequency zero, indoor temp. 29 it's in you know c so we're like 80 something in here evaporator temp 
fan speed high. Let's see if uh, it sees anything when I switch the fan speed here. Auto. <laughs> Check that out. Using a remote to change it on the... And it went to low. It says low. So it's definitely communicating, so my board's good. It's going to be me then. I'll go back to high. That's awesome. Oh. Scroll up. Sometimes you don't realize there's more information. So mode is cool. So you can see my thermistor is all put back in here because I had taken this out and put one going to the, you know, the uh, Frederick before. And I'm sure if I switch modes, it should also switch here. Dry. Heat. <laughs> Fan only. Back to cool. And nothing for the outdoor career, but you you would do the opposite. So uh, you could go out to the outdoor unit, hook it up to the power, and you just connect the S going to the indoor, and you connect S from the outdoor just to this, and do the same thing, but with the outdoor query. And then you could read the sensors, I'm sure, and everything out there. Turn on the compressor section. Set you could set the PMV. I've seen in these. It's a lot, quite a few things you could do with these uh, running perimeter settings. I think that's right here. Set target, set PMV opening, you know, set the four-way valve state. You could, you, so you can hear it click, all that stuff probably. Indoor fan setting, defrost time, set check type, whatever all this stuff is down here. But pretty powerful tool if you work on like, this is for carrier here specifically, but if you're gonna do ductless units, this is a good tool. People like don't know if it's the indoor or outdoor board that's bad when you have a communication or the wire in between. Well, you can, this will let you know for sure that connecting directly to each end, you establish that those are good. Then you could probably connect, all right, say I'm gonna simulate the indoor, but I'm gonna connect to the outside and go through the wire, test the wire, see if it's good or not. Tell you which one of the three possible causes is you know, for a loss of communication. Instead of just changing the outdoor board like the flow chart says, and then if that didn't fix it, you go change the indoor board or vice versa. It's pretty crazy how duckless units are with their little flow charts for checking it, but just how it is. But awesome tool. And it's awesome that I guess I'd splice this back together when I was done with it, <laughs> and it's hooked back up because this is your indoor motor, which is DC high voltage between common and red, and then you have your... Um, I might be getting the order mixed up. I think this is uh, 15 volts. Well, I probably have it. I have it labeled. Yep. Zero to six speed. And then your feedback is probably the blue. Yep. Yep. So the white's the 15 volts. Six, 15 volts. 16 volts. 15. Well, there's that high wall unit put up there. It's kind of hard to see because this uh, LED is just kind of washing out all the video. But it's got that hole drilled on the front, but it really don't matter. And you can't really see it again, partially because of that light. But it works. And then I still got this one here, this ducted one, just blowing the air out the side into my workstation over here, my work area. So using the remote, I could turn this one on, or I could turn this one on, or I could stand back, you know, of course, and turn them both on. But if I turn this one on, it will turn on. And it's working fine. So it's been up for days now. <laughs> I still got to just finish the drain, which I just have dripping into this uh container right here which this ductive one has been dripping into look at this it's been <laughs> making water i have to dump that out every day um i just gotta get my three quarter inch pvc and run it through the wall because this one here which is just connected to the heat pump to heat the hot water i already have it running outside so i just have i'm probably just going to come in through the wall over here tee it in out here somewhere just drop those two drains right in there. It'd be real simple. And it's kind of nice. Um, I've been able to come out here and do some work in the garage and that one blows in there still. And then this one, I just put here to uh, blow right here. To, I can angle that if I wanted it to blow further out there, you know, where I'm working or right straight down here. And like right now it's mostly straight down and it's immediately blowing cool air on me to where it's comfortable to stand here right away and just work on my uh, making this stuff. 
So, got to make another video about what happened with this. So that'll be next. So, yep, it's a, it, just a quick little video of messing around with some garbage old stuff I had. These were somewhat working units. I don't remember what was wrong with them all that I got them, but um, I have a couple of them running now. So that's cool. That, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Catch you guys later.